So today we are talking about uh, KubeEdge. So uh, KubeEdge currently a CNCF uh, incubation project. So uh, mainly I will talk about the uh, latest update. So my name is In Ding. So uh, Kevin cannot make it due to the COVID. So both of us are the maintainers and the founder of this project. Uh, for today, I'm going to talk about uh, project history, uh, key features, and uh, architecture and deployment cases and user cases. And mainly, I will, will talk about this uh, performance and scalability test to show uh, how impressive the project is. So at the last, I will talk about a little bit about our future roadmap. So our journey. So this project uh, we founded in 2018. So uh, we donated to CNCF on that year. And in 2019, March, we entered the CNCF sandbox. And in uh, 2020, uh, September, we become a incubation project in CNCF. So currently, we have uh, more than 5,000 stars on GitHub. GitHub and uh, more than uh, 1,300 folks, and uh, more than uh, 800 contributors, and the uh, two four, uh, 240 more than uh, code submitters, and they are from uh, 60 plus uh, organizations, so it's a well-accepted project, and uh, we really appreciate our contributors. So uh, we, for so for this project, we mainly try to solve the cloud and edge connection issues. So uh, people all know uh, the uh, latency is one issue and also the edge autonomy when the network is broken. There's an interesting topic here, it's broken. So edge need to run autonomously. And also uh, because in the edge, a lot of IoT devices are connected that will have a lot of data generated. We don't want to pass all this data back to the cloud. So the massive data is another issue and also uh, data privacy. So we generate a lot of data in the edge side. However, we don't want to pass all them back to the cloud, especially public cloud. So we need uh, edge computing. The Kube Edge is built for these uh, features. So key features. So we, the Kubernetes project support the native uh, Kubernetes APIs. So when you deploy an app to the edge, so you can use a Kubernetes control Kubernetes directly. So that's a native uh, Kubernetes APIs. As a developer, when you do the deployment, you won't see any different. You deploy an app to an uh, edge node or you deploy to a node into a node in data center and it's transparent to the uh, developers and also uh, we can allow mix edge node and the, the node in the edge side and the node in data center. You can have this uh, mixed deployment. Another important thing is that we have a uh, seamless edge and ad, uh, cloud coordination. So it's transparent to the developers. So the framework itself will handle all the communications between edge and the cloud is transparent to the developers. Another thing is uh, edge autonomy. When the network is broken, we will preserve the uh, data, uh, state in the edge site and run autonomously. And when the network restored, we will do the re-synchronization between the cloud edge, make sure the data will run as your deployment. As you know, the uh, Kubernetes have this list watch. You have a desired state. So when the network is restored, we make sure the edge will run at the desired state when you issue the command from the cloud. And uh, uh, low resource readiness, that's for the IoT cases. When you have a, even have a uh, Raspberry Pi or even a small, very low power edge device, we support uh, this uh, edge. And also uh, device communication, we have built in the framework, support MQTT and other protocols to support uh, device edge communication. And you can even 
control your device from the cloud. And we have a uh, cloud view of the same view, the cloud view from the uh, global matrix data. So what's new? Uh, from uh, 2020, 2021, we have a bunch of new stuff. First, a uh, active, active, uh, high, availability, high availability deployment for the Edge Core. I will uh, go a little bit deeper in the following slides. And uh, we have a new mapper framework updates that for the device connections. And we have a new uh, HTTP request routing between the cloud and Edge improvement. And uh, Edge Mesh is our data plan. We have a complete architecture up upgrade and we have a much better uh, cross-lane communication. And we have a device, that's for the device management, that's from our IoT SIG. So we have this uh, new interface. Most importantly, uh, this year we just tested for uh, 100,000 nodes and 1 million pod deployment. I will show in the following slides, there's a very impressive uh, performance data. So architecture. So uh, the main thing is uh, we have a generic deployment from uh, Kubernetes. You can see uh, we can mix cloud node and edge node together. So edge node is virtually here, but actually is running on the edge side. So to solve this problem, the main component we created is a cloud core and edge core. The cloud core is running in the cloud control plane. Edge core is uh, derived from Kubelet. So we set up the uh, WebSocket, the long connections, or you can have the cube as a, another alternative. So this one, we have a bi-directional channel communicated between cloud node and edge node. That's why even your cloud node, uh, your edge node is running behind some firewalls. So from cloud, you cannot even see the edge node. However, with this uh, setup, so you can still control your cloud to edge, send the command line from here. So that's the, our connections. Uh, and uh, we have this uh, CRD created for the edge controller, uh, device controller, that's for the IoT cases and the edge controls. So let's see uh, how we deploy an app to the edge node. So internally, you can see we have this uh, least watch mechanism from Kubernetes. The watch pod will be there. That's the edge CD deployment in the uh, Kubernetes. So when the desired state change, you have a pod created, the scheduler see the state change and they will issue the update pod to bind it to the node. Then, uh, then the SCD will see the state change. We update here. The main thing is happening in the uh, in the cloud core part. That's our communication. So we have this edge controller. So we see this. Uh, we watch the pod as well. We see okay, that's the state change. We need to deploy a new pod. So we this the communication channel I just showed in previous slides. We send the uh, communication to the Edge Hub, Cloud Hub, that's the connection. That's the WebSocket connection we set up. So we issue the command to the Edge Core. This the Edge D is basically our derived uh, Kubelet. We created this uh, pod here. Then we have a, a local storage uh, maintained state. We persistent here is a SQLite database running on the Edge side. So in this way, when the user request coming from the cloud. Here is the part of the cloud uh, cloud edge connections. So then we can create a pod on the edge side. All these are transparent to de developers. You only need to change, update your deployment configuration uh, with uh, some tag. Say, okay, I want to create a pod on the edge on the edge node. If you have the label on the edge node, they will create that for you. You don't need to do anything. I mean, the developer. Uh, here is our HA deployment. That's what I was talking about uh, in the previous slides. So it's used 
in the earliest edition, we only have one edge core on the master control plane. That's become a bottleneck, and when this service crashed, so basically we lose the connection between the cloud and edge. So for last year, we have we created an active active deployment. That means that's multiple active cloud core instances running are running. So then through the load balancer, we issue the connection to the different edge node. So if one edge core is crushed, the con we can uh, load balance to other cloud cores to make sure the connection is still running. So uh, the service won't be broken. <coughs> Here is uh, more like the IoT cases. We do a deployment to the robotics Robotics for, uh, you can see all the other things are the same. Only thing is here, so this a robotics visual, we do the, the ROS, it's a turtle, it's the turtle, uh, what's the name? It's the turtle, yeah, turtle bot three is a standard uh, industry robotics. So here you can see we deploy the apps here to uh, in the edge node, basically one robot become an edge node. When we deploy the app, you can see we can uh, issue this uh, ROS topic, use the command vol volume, so you can issue some command, so even control the, uh, the robot. Uh, so here are some user cases in the recent uh, deploy adoption for uh, Kuba Edge project. One is this uh, large-scale CDN node that's from a telecom customer. They do this, basically they have a multiple Kubernetes cluster deployed. So each of them control a region. Each region have multiple CDN node. The CDN node is considered as a edge node. Basically they deploy this edge core and, and cloud core components, the Kubernetes. So this way you can have a multiple Edge, uh, CDN node controlled by the Kubernetes cluster. So this AD CDN is remote, it's outside the, the central data center. Another uh, adoption last year is the uh, vehicle cloud collaboration. Basically each vehicle will become a edge node especially. So here similar to, uh, we didn't show here, but similar to the previous deployment you may have multiple Kubernetes clusters. And important thing is that when this vehicle is running, you may lose uh, connections. The Kubernetes architecture makes sure this edge will run autonomy and it won't be broken if the connection is broken. It's a very stable uh, architecture. Uh, now I'm talking about the uh, one of two uh, very important tests that we did last year. We do the performance test. So we test uh, SSO, uh, SLOs for the Kube Edge project. So we test the uh, latency, throughput, the scalability, CPU usage, and memory usage. And now I'm talking about the uh, scalability. It's uh, one impressing uh, one thing we want to mention. So Kubernetes scalability from uh, SIG scalability, you can see we cannot consider the node numbers deployed as a scalability. So there's a multiple dimensions. You have a number of namespaces. Besides the node, number of nodes, you have number of namespace, number of services, number of secrets, uh, number of pods, number of ingress connections, load balancers, so it's multiple dimensions. If you increase one dimension, it will cause the other dimension to shrink. So here is a, we got this picture from the SIG scalability, Kubernetes SIG of scalability. So here we'll define the, the SIG define a lot of a limit and numbers for the scalability and the SLO and SLIs. So you can check here. So, <coughs> so here we do according to the uh, Kubernetes SIG guidance, we do our 
Kubernetes scalability test. So here is the deployment. We have five edge cores. Through the load balancers, we control multiple edge nodes. Uh, we are using the uh, cluster loader two. That's the to test the density. Here, uh, this is the configurations. That's the uh, official configuration the SIG scalability provided. Here are our configuration parameters. You can see we configure is a 100,000 nodes and the 1 million pods deployed. That's, that's the, we use the uh, official test matrix. We configure uh, this number. So here is our test results. It's very impressive. And first is the uh, API responsive, for, uh, responsive latencies. So for mutating API latencies, you can see when the threshold is a one second, the uh, 50 percentile, 90 percentile is almost flat. We only have some spikes in the 99 percentile. In the read-only API calls, you can see uh, the 50 percentile, 90 percentile still steady. And the read-only read API calls latency uh, at least uh, for 50, 90 percent tiles are both uh, steady. And for read-only calls latencies, we have a few spikes, but it's very uh, satisfying. Here is the pod startup latencies. Basically, you can see uh, it's really fast. There are here a couple of zeros. That's because uh, we don't support uh, RFC uh, 339 nano protocol. So because this, we only support it to a, uh, about a millisec uh, about second degrees uh, precision. So if it's a faster response, it's less, much less than one second. So uh, the Prometheus will only show as at zero. However, it has some numbers. It's, it's just doesn't show the enough uh, precision. So with this test result, we can have the conclusion say, current Kubernetes can support 100 node, edge nodes, and we can manage 1 million pods deployed. Uh, this is a full test report we are going to publish. This one uh, to public after uh, this KubeCon EU 2002. We are going to publish the full report with all the setup, latency, configuration files. It's almost ready. So for the future, uh, we are going to even support our uh, cross subnet communications, edge collaborations, as uh, more security because the security is more and more uh, got attention, and especially in the catch cases, we want to achieve our strong uh, security edge. And we are going to have a decentralized security for application running on the edge. And the other thing is still continue to improve our uh, device mappers to have a more connection. And we are <coughs> going to manage class uh, from the cloud. We can uh, currently uh, one edge node is an individual node. In the future, we are going to support a cluster of edge nodes as the edge cluster, edge site. And and another important thing for the community collaboration, we are we are creating a, a TSC a steering committee, technical steering committee. We are invited a few uh, influenced people from the uh, industry, and we are going to create this uh, a TSC. And we are uh, have a, multi, a cross community collaborations going on. We talk to the AJAX Foundation, already Eclipse. And uh, another big thing, we are going to uh, Wasm. So we have the Wasm Edge collaborations. It's going on. And here is uh, some uh, key uh, website. I hope you, if you are interested, uh, that's our official website. And that's our uh, code source. That's our uh, Slack channel. We have a community, meeting, community meetings every week. We have a two times, one for uh, more like a United States friendly time, one is much suitable for the Europe time. So we have a two different time. Hopefully, uh, if you are interested, you can 
hop in and join the meetings. And here is our documentation mailing list. If you have questions, you don't, uh, you can either ask in the Slack or you just send to the uh, mailing list or you can ping us in the, from Twitter. Now, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions? So I was, um, yeah, I want to ask a question regarding the 5G Mac deployments, your own multi-access edge computing. Do you have any use cases related to that? Uh, the, the question is about the 5G Mac. Actually, we uh, in a Crino, you know, a Crino community, right? The LF Edge in Crino, that's a 5G app. So the Kube Edge have a, a blueprint project in a Crino community. So we collaborate with uh, FabG, Mac, all the telecom, and uh, Mavenir. I don't know if you, uh, does, uh, so we are talking about how we can collaborate. Actually, we contribute to the uh, white paper for this FabG, Mac, and also another one is running in Thailand is for the telecom. I forget the, uh, the name. We contribute to the white papers. So it's published, I think, in 2020. It's when the pandemic just started. You don't have real use cases coming. Uh, you mean the edge cases we are doing? One of the, uh, the this actually is a telecom uh, investor. So we are talking about how we can improve this apply to 5G Mac mm. situations. Thank you. But it's uh, more as coming. Uh, currently, uh, let me rephrase. So your question is, uh, if you you have an app running on the edge node, how you communicate between uh, the application running on different edge nodes? Or how to how to control that communication, or even like to say, because we operate in a very like. Oh, uh, you mean the uh, network policy? How we can apply to? Yeah. Uh, currently, we don't have that. So the edge mesh project is uh, in the data plan to connect across. Uh, cross LAN communication between uh, different nodes. For your question, it's more like a security feature. That's what I put in the roadmap. We are doing the, uh, here we have this uh, decentralized security and uh, strong security protections. That's the things we are researching right now, how we can apply this network policy similar to the cloud network policy to the the application running on the edge. So that's a really good question. Thank you. So um, the cloud part and the edge part there are different um, control planes. Uh, if uh, the communication is not between the edge and the cloud, is possible to manually um, change the configuration on the edge <coughs> part? Sorry, so can you repeat the question? So for cloud and edge communication? You mean this connection yeah. broken? Yeah. yeah. You can manually change the configuration of the edge code. Uh, you mean can you imagine? Uh, uh, yes, because uh, that's the nature of edge, right? So we have uh, some edge deployment. Actually, the user doesn't own it. I mean, the, the user is, uh, for example, if you are a manufacturer of your, uh, for the uh, uh, wireless router, so, we actually uh, have a user case before is a water uh, company. They provide a device for the, the company provide uh, drinking water. So they provide some edge core deployment in the edge site, but the individual site bought this, uh, the edge device 
so they own they don't own it but they, they we can show it from the cloud the application deploy uh, th this one they can manually I mean you can never prevent people plug in a USB drive and uh, reload your kernel or something right that you cannot prevent so the security we say when this connection restored we have the sync controller to make sure this desired state always from your cloud side so you have this have a desired state we resync when the connection control but when the connection is broken so we lose the control is uh, actually you we cannot do anything until the network uh, restored however um, this is much better if you we detect the, the issues if you already broke this one we can see this only have this side got broken we cannot like this uh, pollute the other edge node we prevent that from happening so but if this lose connection you never can prevent people with hack locally from here but you can only hack the the node you can have ac physical access right more like the computer running at your home uh, this first Uh, the question is uh, this latency really high so what's going to happen or uh, so this so when this latency is high there's uh, two issues this is a control will be issued low that's we try to make a uh, actually uh, we only transfer only a very limited data here when you do deployment uh, you are when you do deploy an app you you need to pull the image or something right you mean you probably won't pull from our control plane you pull from your I mean either from your own uh, image hub or you you can provide a hub already built in so that is one kind of like that we this channel we only issue as a, a control command or sync your state we already reduce a lot of a communication between cloud we build this one and we reduce a lot of communication between uh, cloud and node in the native Kubernetes you have a lot of pings going on and if a latency high you will see oh this node is already dead that the eviction will kick in and redeploy the app so but in our case we prevent this from happening we have the cloud core as a proxy make sure it won't happen is we can distinguish a slow node from the dead node but in the native cloud native uh, Kubernetes when you s this one latency high your control plane probably will say oh that's the node is dead or is not functioning you you're going to evict the application to other node that we are trying to prevent here actually we have a user case uh, one of the customer adopters they deploy this one using 2G wireless network because they have some remote side they only have a 2G connections so it's very slow it's functioning really, really well but the thing is you cannot I mean provide a image download you either download from a, a local image hub or something this can, 2G cannot provide a image download the bandwidth is too low Uh, so we just say we assume this one are very slow so for the native Kubernetes about 30 seconds broken you are going to start I mean the default policy 30 seconds you are going to evict all the applications right but here we don't we have a cache here we have this a sync uh, we have a, a, a sync single controller deployment here as a component we make sure we re always resync we never evict I mean the application from the edge node so when we we will do is say we will assume this one can always come back so because especially when it it's not like a cloud cases that you can deploy your application anywhere for the edge node that means we want to deploy a particular application to a particular site right so if you have a two 
it doesn't make sense. So for this application running in your site to run in a B side, that's it's not the edge case because uh, you have your uh, device connected. You don't want your uh, sensors transfer data to a remote side. You want to transfer to a uh, local. That's why we we never evict the application. We make sure whenever it come back, it will resync the data and the state. Make sure it's running at the desired state. I'm sorry. Uh, you mean this is super slow? Yeah. Uh, this this one we uh, the sync controller will try. We already re first we already reduce the required amount. So suppose we only have the date matrix or the desired state, the diff we are only transfer. Yeah, this is completely broken, then we cannot control. This will run autom autonomy, I mean, atomic. So this edge will, I mean, still running and monitor application running and locally. If the application crash, we will restart because we have a local, uh, we, have, we have a local uh, state cache. Basically, that's the latest desired state we stored, right? So if you have your app crashed, we will restart. You have uh, three app replicas, you only have two now, we will restart and back to three. But that's the, the best we can get, right? Because if you change here, say I want five replicas, but when the connection broken, you can never tell. However, when here you said three, we keep on three, so we still keep the edge autonomy. But whenever it's restored, we'll see, okay, we'll pass the state. We desire five to here. So replace the local desire state to five. So we'll run five. I think we can have a, one last one. Uh, actually, I have a very, very basic question. So I'm very new to Cloud Edge. Uh, so please, uh, we can talk later if it takes, it's gonna take more time. So uh, is uh, the Edge node uh, built on top of Kubelet? Like it is Kubernetes node or it's completely different? It is a different implementation of Kubelet. Uh, so, so maybe you can do offline. Yeah, sure. That's why it's very basic question. Sure. We can talk offline yeah, later. This one, yeah, I think it's time here. Yeah, sure. So thank you everyone. So I, I still have this uh, channel. So anything you can ask me in the Slack or send an email wise. So if you have further questions, you can either add the Slack channel or send me email or ping us in Twitter so we can follow up offline. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone.